What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Off the Glass channel. Have a little bit of a Super Bowl preview episode. We promised it from the last uh, full podcast episode, and so we are here delivering it. It's probably going to be up Friday morning if you're watching this recording this Thursday night. We want to give you a nice, like, 15, 20-minute video going through, breaking down some of the key matchups in the game, um, and then obviously both giving our Super Bowl picks um, and then our MVP predictions as well for the game. So. I'm going to go ahead and get right into it. Obviously, Chiefs, Niners, the biggest game of the year. Differing storylines, I think, for both teams that I think is interesting how you have the Niners as a team who came in basically as the NFC favorite, probably from start to finish, um, handling business all the way through um, with that, even with that little stretch of adversity they had. It was a three game skid there earlier in the, in the middle of the season um, after starting like 5-0 and or 8-0, and whatever it was. Um, and the Chiefs were a team who looked like a shell of themselves for most of this season. But when you have a guy like Patrick Mahomes, you get him to the playoffs, that's all, that's all you can ask for. He's going to give you a shot. And uh, he's played great. This defense has played lights out the entire postseason. Mm -hmm. um, and they are back for their his fourth Super Bowl in six years. I was talking about that at the barbershop today. Like, Four Super Bowls in six years starting. That's nuts, bro. Insane. It's nuts. <laughs> it don't you don't see that kind of like to come into the game and like if you want to knock him for the fact that he sat for the first year or whatever, but just to come in as a starter that second second season of his career and to go on a six year run where you never not make the AFC championship game and make it to the Super Bowl four out of six times. It's a crazy start to a career. It's it's insane. Like I listen, I don't, my football history isn't like tip top, but that we don't, I know we haven't seen a start to a career as mm -hmm. crazy as that ever before. That's no, insane. I think the only the the longest record of reaching conference championship games in a row I think is Brady with eight, but that was like later at his time. In, yeah, that in wasn't the start. Right. So what we are witnessing is something special and. Quick sidebar before we really get into it. If you're one of the people that's hating the Chiefs for the Taylor Swift stuff or whatever, bro, stop it, bro. It's, it's so not that it's point. not that deep. Was, the New York Times did an article. She averages like 27 seconds of screen time or something on at, at games. Mm -hmm. The NFL is gonna post about it a bunch because it makes them money. You gotta make them that. a lot of money, bro. It's just business. if it's really right, if it really is bothering you to that point, bro. You don't got to look at it. It's social media. You can scroll away. If it's on your TV, it's on your TV for over the course of a game less than the length of a typical commercial, bro. You be on your <laughs> phone when that's coming up anyway. So just it's not that deep. If you don't like Mahomes for other reasons, I can't help you there. But at least you need to be at least appreciative of the greatness that we're seeing. Because like we both just said, we never seen a run to start a career like this. But with that, let's go ahead and get right into some of these key matchups. Um, I'll let you start. What is what is something that you're really looking for um, in this game, either side, Chiefs or Niners? So for the Chiefs, I feel like the biggest thing for them is going to be getting out to a fast start, how they've been doing. They, I believe pretty much this whole playoffs, they started out, you know, scoring their first possession or scoring on the first two drives, just starting out fast, getting that lead. I feel like against the Niners, um, we've seen it in the first two playoff games that they played, like the other teams with the, the Packers and the Lions, both got out to fast starts and both had control of the game. Throughout majority of the game, they both just kind of folded at the end. So I feel like mm -hmm. the Chiefs, our team to where if they get out to a fast start, they get up 14 to 3, 14 nothing, they get out to up two scores. I don't believe that a Patrick Mahomes led team is going to give up that lead or make the crucial mistakes at the end that some of these other uh, other teams have made to where, you know, they let San Francisco get back into the game. So, as far as that aspect, I feel like they first need to establish the run because these two playoff games that you've seen the Niners play in, for whatever reason, um, they have just been giving it up crazy on the ground like i don't know what it is like obviously they've been playing two good run teams with aaron mm -hmm. the bag you got the gibbs and montgomery and that lions o-line which is great um but same thing chiefs o-line is great pacheco is really good so i feel like you know they should be able to establish the run and then you know uh stay ahead of the, the ahead of the, the sticks um so if they establish the run obviously i'm i'm not really worried about Mahomes in general 
So I feel like that's really not a problem. But they are really just like for the Chiefs, they do need to get out to an early lead so that you have San Francisco playing from behind, not being able to run the ball as much as they want to. So Mm -hmm. I feel like that's the big thing for the Chiefs. And as far as for the Niners, honestly, and it's crazy because we talked about Brock Purdy on here a lot. I for them to win the Super Bowl, in my opinion, he's gonna have to play at a level I've never seen him play this entire year. And that doesn't mean like I I've seen Brock Purdy play great. Like you know, it's not just strictly numbers. I mean, like this second, this Chiefs secondary is legit. This Chiefs mm-hmm. defense in general is legit. I feel like they can do decent a decent job. You're never gonna stop CMC. It's never gonna happen. They can be do a decent job to limit him a little bit if that's what they really want to do and just say, you know what, we trust our secondary to man up against your guys and you're just going to have to beat us in that aspect. So I Brock Purdy, to me, would have to play a game where I'm like, I, I just was flat out wrong on this guy and if, in order for them to win, I feel like. Now, I could be wrong. They could just completely run all over them, establish to run and win in you know, a typical 49ers fashion, uh, you know, run the ball establish get the play action going and then win that way but i just got i honestly i really got i have more faith in the, the kansas city defense than i do the offense at this point like the kc defense is legit. Yeah. the secondary is legit so brock Purdy to me is gonna have to play at an elite quarterback level and it doesn't mean you know wide open receivers you know um you know getting schemed up plays he's gonna have to make plays on his own throwing the football and i, sh- I don't know i I guess we'll talk. We'll get into who you know we think will win. As far as like you know, can he do that? But I think that's the key for them to win this game. Mm-hmm. I, I'm gonna take that even a step further. The the biggest thing from the the 49ers perspective, at least offensively for them, Brock Purdy is going to have to play his sh- sharpest mental game of the entire season. Mm-hmm. And I say that because, and we talked about this in the AFC Championship preview. Uh, Steve Spagnola is one of the most creative defensive coordinators in the league. It's part of why this defense has been so lights out this entire year. Not only are they a team that can, like you said, get up, be physical with you, with guys like Snead on the outside, um, McDuffie's all pro a slot corner this year. Um, they also are very good at finding ways to disguise different looks on the back end. Um, and when you think about this Shanahan system and how Brock Purdy has played all year, like I mentioned um, in our last episode, Brock Purdy has some of the best anticipation out of any quarterback in the NFL. Part of that is because of the offense that he's in, but that's what this offense demands, and he's able to to lock that in. And on film, he very, very frequently is a guy that throws people before breaks. He's anticipating windows. He's anticipating you know guys winning one-on-one routes. And he's able to make those throws. Spags is also a DC who beat Brady twice. <laughs> mm-hmm. He's able to contain the 17 and 0 <laughs> New England Patriots. So I, I assure you, I, I know the quotes have come out that he's impressed with Brock Purdy on film and all that, and all that can be well and good. He's got something ready. He's got a game plan ready to go. This is not his first rodeo. It's not even his second rodeo. <laughs> he's been here before. He's done that. He's a multiple, multiple time Super Bowl champion, right? My, was he, I don't know how many he has from his first couple in Kansas City, but he's at least got three. Mm-hmm. So, like, he's been around the block at the highest level against the top, top talent um, coming out of, of the NFC. So, I think what Brock Purdy is able to do in terms of trying to be able to quickly diagnose what – uh, coverage the Chiefs are in is going to be massive, as well as, like you said, not only is he going to have to, in that sense, make plays passing, I think there are going to be times where uh, the Chiefs do go up and get physical with them and say, We're about to, we're going to send heat at you. We're going to play zero. We're going to trust our guys on the back end to hold up. What is Brock Purdy going to do on the ground? Mm-hmm. Because he did. That's a, a big reason why they were able to come back in the NFC Championship game is he showed off some of that dual threatness. <laughs> Um, was able to take off and get big, big scrambles at, at timely times for them. I think that'll probably also play a factor here as well. Um, so to, to your point, we're, we're going to have to see one of, if not the sharpest Brock Purdy games, I think, for him to to the Chiefs to win this football game. Uh, because I, I agree, I don't think they're going to be able to just 
out muscled this Chiefs defense. This is far and away the best defense that they will have faced this entire pro season. Yeah. Packers defense is, is young. They they played they played great against the Cowboys. <laughs> um mm. And they looked better just generally this postseason than they did in the regular season. In the regular season, they looked bad. Mm -hmm. This Lions secondary, from a run defense perspective, great. Secondary was questionable the entire season. Terrible. And it showed in that, that NFC Championship game. This Chiefs defense, top to bottom, start to finish, they carried this Chiefs offense all the way through their woes of the regular season. They were mm -hmm. the only reason keeping them afloat. In a lot of games, the Chiefs defense was, was winning them the game. 100%. Um, so it's going to take it's going to take a big game for Brock. I'm not saying he has to have some crazy otherworldly performance because of the talent around him. But the last time that the 49ers got here, they were a couple of plays away that Jimmy didn't make. They're going to need Brock to be the guy to make those plays if they want to be able to win this game. And he's capable of it. I think he's leagues better than Jimmy G was in this offense. 100%. Um, but that, that'll be a good segue right into our, our picks. And, and I'll go first. Um, not going to bury the lead. I have Kansas City. And going back to what I just said, a lot of it really just revolves around Spags being the experienced coordinator that he is, um, understanding how the Shanahan system works. We've seen it throughout, not just with this system in San Francisco with Jimmy G or with Brock even this year, but even the the – you know, the branches of the Shanahan tree, when you go to a guy like Tua in Miami, um, what Kansas City just did to this same style of offense in the playoffs just two, three games ago, had Tua looking terrible in the postseason. <clears throat> um, and so if you're able to do things to muddy up the rhythm, they're not able to just sit and be comfortable and make throws on time. You, if you can't make it out of structure, this offense shuts down. So I, I think Brock Purdy is capable of potentially doing it. But if I have to put my money somewhere, I'm going to lean with Mahomes. I'm not, I have no doubt that he is not, is going to make the plays necessary on his part. Mm -hmm. So if it comes down to what can this Kansas City defense do, I'm trusting this Kansas City defense in a passing perspective and a running perspective over this 49ers offense. <laughs> It's going to come down to a couple of key plays, um, and I, I trust in Spags right now more more than that. So I'm going to be riding with the Chiefs. I think it's going to be a very tough game. Nonetheless, it's going to be very physical. Uh, I think it's going to be a very good Super Bowl, but it, it's hard to bet against Mahomes. It's hard to bet against this Chiefs defense. And the Niners just they have not played good defenses this postseason. Two of their, their three losses in the regular season were to the Browns and the Ravens, granted – you know, they had injuries, but those were two of the best defenses um, in the NFL this year. So I, I, I just got to I got to lean Chiefs. Yeah, I'll be honest, man, I'm picking the Chiefs as well. Uh, it's, it's Everything you said, I completely agree. I just think that, you know, if you even if you just look at it from a standpoint of, you know, like I said, they went from the Packers, the Lions to the Chiefs defense. And even if you mm -hmm. look at it from the Chiefs aspect, like it's facing quarterbacks, they went from, you know, Tua, then they went to Josh Allen and Lamar. No disrespect, but now they're going to Purdy. You know, it's like just the it, as far as the the opponents that they played is different. Like I said, this is going to be the toughest challenge that the San Francisco offense has faced all year. Um, granted, they have two weeks to prepare, so they're going to have multiple, you know, weeks of multiple opportunities, you know, get ready for you, prepare things, you know, throw mm -hmm. different looks at Brock Purdy. Um I do believe they'll be, they'll be able to control the game and then go up. And then we have to see, you know, if the 49ers can answer. Because, like I said, these two other playoff games, they've been down. They haven't looked great in the first half. Not even just Brock Purdy, just in general. The defense, everyone, they have not looked great. And they found a way to win, whether you want to blame it on the other team collapsing at the end. Regardless, they won is what it is. I don't think that will happen with the Chiefs. I don't think that they're no. they're too experienced and they're too good of a team to let that happen. So if they go up on you, I feel like they'll take control of the game and then they'll make all the right plays that they need to make, but they won't try to – I feel like the other teams tried to do too much when they didn't need to, whether it was like Dan Campbell going in on some questionable fourth downs, Jordan Love trying to make plays that he didn't really need to make. That's kind of inexperience. The Chiefs know, like, all right, if they have control over the game, they're going to go up two scores, whatever. They'll make just enough plays to win the game, not do too much, but not do too little. 
So I feel mm-hmm. like they'll be able to take control of the game. And like I said, it really, to me, it comes down to, it's crazy as it sounds, do I trust Brock Purdy or do I trust Patrick Mahomes? Because like I said, I know for a fact Mahomes is going to make the plays necessary. Brock Purdy, like I said, will have to play his best game as far as what I feel like is going to be his best game, not just numbers-wise, 200 yards, three touchdowns. Like, literally, no, you're, you're, you're reading the defense, you're handling everything that they give you as far as blitzes, as far as different schemes, as far as different looks, and you're making all the throws necessary, whether that be you're down, getting them back into the game, whether it means, mm-hmm. just, whether it means just playing a clean game, he will have to play the, his best, cleanest game. And like I said, it's possible. Don't get me wrong. It's not like – I don't want to make it seem like he's some bum and he can't do it. But at the end of the day, like I would rather trust the Chiefs, Chiefs defense and Mahomes versus, right. you know, Purdy, a guy who, again, also this is his first Super Bowl. Like, it's not like – act like – you know, I understand he has success in the regular season. He has playoff wins under his belt. He's never played in the Super Bowl. You know, like even Mahomes' first Super Bowl, he didn't play good against the Niners. He didn't play good until I believe like the fourth quarter. They were down like 10 points for like six or seven minutes to go. Third and 15 he hit Tyreek Hill on that deep stale route. Changed right. the game. That's what but, I'm saying. You know, so, like, to that point, they had scored 10 points basically through three quarters. I said that, yeah, that's an underrated aspect as well. Just because he had so much success, people forget that one, mm-hmm. this is only his second year. So, even if he plays bad, it's like you could even say that in his defense. Like, bro, he's this is only his second year here. Right. And he's, he's barely, I believe he's just now played like a full season of, right. of, as a starter. So, yeah. You know, that's another aspect as well, facing, you know, like I said, a defensive coordinator who's been here, who's faced other, you know, great offenses. So and when it, to me, it really just comes down to the fact that I trust the Kansas City defense and Mahomes over, you know, the San Francisco 49ers. Yeah, and I, I, I don't want it to be a situation where, again, as polarizing as the, the discourse has been on Brock Purdy, if he comes out and he struggles, like I don't want that again to be a full bashing session on him because my whole little theory around why I'm leaning Kansas City is all predicated on Spagnola and their defense. So it's like he he that's kind of what is his job. Like they get paid too. They the got same a lot of stars that made on that Lamar team. look bad. Right. They right. made Tua look t- bro, dudes is really like, ah, I don't know if the Dolphins signed Tua, it's an extension type of bad. Mm-hmm. And a big reason that I'm leaning Chiefs again is because Mike McDaniel's coming from that same Shanahan type of offense. Spags has already stopped it this playoffs. Like, if anybody's got a recipe for it, it's going to be him. Um, obviously, the, the Dolphins' weapons are different. I don't want to say they're less, but they're they're different. Um, and then Shanahan just is a different coach than and Mike McDaniel is. And more experienced, been here before, um, but uh, it, it's hard, hard to to want to trust the 49ers offense in the situation. But I, I still think it's going to be a great game. Um, but that, that's the biggest thing that, that sways me at this point. Um, so we both got the Chiefs MVP prediction. Is there any any special one, or is it the obvious choice, bro? Pacheco could run for 150 and two. They're gonna give it to Mahomes, bro. Like I just feel like it don't matter. Like, bro, it's just like why it's if the Chiefs win, it'll be Mahomes. Like Mahomes will have to play legitimately bad, like mm-hmm. bad. Because even if he's a game manager, they'll still give it to him. So yeah. unless somebody like does something historic, like Pacheco goes for like 253 and like d- destroys everyone, is the reason they win. Mm-hmm. But like I said, even if he plays not like tip top Mahomes level, which honestly he hasn't really played. Like he played, I feel like he played good in the last Super Bowl, but he didn't throw for a lot of yards. I believe he threw for sub 200 yards in that Super Bowl. They granted they had a lot of like short fields, so that's probably why. But yeah. I don't think he's played a Super Bowl that was like regular season Mahomes, like tip top 300 yard, three touchdowns type of game. And yeah. honestly, I don't really even expect that this game because that he hasn't really done that much this year. Mm-hmm. Um, but that hasn't had- been that hasn't been this year's Chief Team identity. Exactly, and it hasn't needed to be. And I don't think, and like right. I said, if they go up and they don't need that, like he'll do that if that's absolutely what is necessary. They don't need that. He will be 100% being a game manager. And mm-hmm. if they win, even if he's just a game manager, I'm pretty sure he's going to get the Super Bowl MVP. I agree. So I'm not even going to drag it out any longer. It's it's probably going to be Mahomes. He's already got to, uh, to add a third one to that. At his age, the pace is crazy. Special, special conversations. You can't, at like, 
getting to a third Super Bowl, getting a third Super Bowl for him and a third Super Bowl MVP before the age of 30. Like you can't even gatekeep him from the conversations off of accolades no more. I, I get it. Like, and I'm not look, very clear in my wording. I'm not saying he's he's even entertaining real real. Like, if we're really gonna be like, who's the greatest quarterback of all time? It's Brady. We don't even that's that we're not close to being ready for that combo yet. He's got to mm-hmm. pass a couple other guys in Super Bowls first. But you start wanting to have some conversations around a guy like Montana, who's got four, like. You can't even, like, when you take the talent, the on-field, what you see with now, he's got the resume to back it up. You can't you can't shove him out of the conversation because, ah, you know, I don't care about what he's played like. He doesn't have the rings. He, he's, he's stacking up the resume now, and it's only going to keep growing. He legitimately can play 10 to 12 more years, bro. Bro, the pace he's on is nuts. It is like a ridiculous. Ridiculous pace. Granted, I as great as he is, I don't think he'll make the ASU championship game every single year if he has like a 20-year career. I highly doubt he'll make it 20 consecutive times. Yeah. But just right now, he's made it every single year. That means if he wins this Super Bowl, that means he would have won the Super Bowl every other year. Like for half of the, the years he's been a starter, he has won the Super Bowl. That's a crazy pace. And if he ends up winning this one, there is absolutely no in my mind. He's no lower than three. There's no way you can put him lower than three in my mind. Who you got above him? I'll, no, I'll, let's me personally. I, and no, I'm curious. Two. No, me personally, he's oh. two. I'm I'm just saying. I'm talking about just in general. Me yeah. personally, he's two. If he wins the Super Bowl, he might be. I ain't gonna lie. He, he, to me, he's two oh, now. You, you get you, you get spicy. I'm just gonna, <laughs> I, I, honestly, all right, from an accolade standpoint, if, all right, let's just say he loses this one. It'd be hard to be like he's two now. You'd be like, he's on pace for it, but cool. If he wins this one, he's two for me. But I would say, like, he's no lower than three if he wins the Super Bowl, either, regardless of whether you hate him, just looking at the accolades and the fact that, because we can use a little bit of projection. Like, bro, he's, even if he, let's say he wins this one, he doesn't win another Super Bowl. You don't think he's going to rack up insane stats, insane accolades, he's first insane ballot yards? Hall, first ballot Hall of Famer already. Like. It, easily. So it's like, Bro, it's, it, he's already at an insane. It has an insane start to the career. If he wins this one for me, he's two. But I think you could put him no lower than three. I don't think there's a way you can have him. I don't think you can have anybody higher, rather than either Joe Montana and obviously Tom Brady. I was wondering who else you had up there. I like Peyton is the first person to always come to mind for me. I mean, honestly, um, like to me, I, and I'm gonna be honest, like Joe Mont. I didn't watch Joe Montana play. I really didn't. I didn't even really take the time to go back and do research. To be, I obviously I can look at stats, but I try not to be a guy that's like, you did this, all right, you're this good. Like I don't like doing that. But yeah, you got to obviously in some aspects you do have to pay your respects. But just from right. my eyes, from what I've seen, there's nobody that I've seen that plays quarterback from talent wise, right, better than Mahomes. It's just, that is what it is, bro. I'm sorry. Right. That's not what the goat argument is based off of. But if we want to talk, what is the best quarterback we've ever seen? I don't have an argument against Mahomes. I no, think it's bro. clear in a way, bro. He does stuff routinely that is like, this makes no sense, bro. No bro, sense. It cement last year cemented it for me, bro. He did it on, he against the, he sprained his ankle. First of all, against the Jaguars came back. Mm-hmm. Still, they won that game on a super sprained ankle against your quote unquote rival. The second best QB in the league. A lot of people say who you have never beat, who was talking all this junk. But was that in, that was in Cincinnati, wasn't it? No, nah, no, nah, it was, it was it in uh, Arrowhead. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah right. Because they were talking about Burrowhead. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Through all that to win that game, then to go on to play who people, everyone viewed as the best team in the league at that point, which was the Eagles, who at that mm-hmm. point had stacked a stout roster. defense, stout, stacked roster, insane offense, re, re injures the ankle, like, and to still win that game. Like, come on, bro. To me, that was like, that moment was like a Jordan flu game type of type of deal, you know. Yeah, so that was like that was like the the legacy moment. So to me, it was cemented last year. But if he wins this one, it, to me, it's no debate. I I personally would have him at two. Yeah. After this, if if they're able to pull it out, um, where do you think? Actually, like f- take this Super Bowl side. Where do you think the Mahomes Kelsey duo ranks up like all time? Like I feel like it's it's hard to put them. Any lower than like Jerry Rice, Joe Montana, Grady, uh, Brady, Brady Gronk. Mm-hmm. It feels like they slide in right there at three. 
Bro, there was a I seen a like a graphic of like just my, just Kelsey alone playoff numbers. The only person who is better is is Rice as a pass. He just he's breaking his records right now, which is crazy. Exactly. He's a tight end. It's a tight end. He's not. I don't think he's gonna break the the yards. When I believe he has like a ways to go for the yards. Nah. Um. And I don't remember what the touchdowns was. I don't think he's breaking out of there. I think it was like seven more touchdowns. It was something like that. I can't remember. I know he broke the receptions one, but. As a, if we're just talking strictly Travis Kelsey alone, he you can he's the second best pass catcher in the playoffs ever. And you pair that with Mahomes, who numbers wise is like the greatest playoff quarterback ever. If you just look at strictly numbers and where he's at right now, and like aside of totals, obviously, because that comes with time. But mm-hmm. wise, brother, easily, easily top three. Like there's, yeah. there's no lower than three. So. Again, everything is going to come with, I feel like, time because it, all, it always is hard because you could project, you know, you could project, all right, yeah, he's at this point right now. He could win, blah, 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 many Super Bowls. Who, who's to say they don't go on a 10-year draw of not winning a Super Bowl? We don't you, – you know, Nothing, you bro, know. nothing is promised. It's, it's not promised. You never really know. So it's hard to project, but if we're just going off right now, the way they're playing, the faith you have in the organization to build a championship roster mm-hmm. around them, the faith you have in him. There's nothing that tells me right now that they're going to stop winning anytime soon. All right. The the Patriots organization did a fantastic job of putting various weapons around Brady at multiple stops throughout his career. Guys are getting in the league and retiring, and he, they just replenishing it. Mm-hmm. Went from early, early on, Lawrence Maroney and Deion Branch, who got one of the Super Bowl MVPs that, that Brady played in. And you get to guys like Wes Welker. Obviously, you have the Randy Moss years where they couldn't get it done, but obviously he was huge talent on their team. And mm-hmm. then you get into the the Julian Edelman, the Aaron Hernandez, the Gronk years to kind of finish up those those years in New England. Danny Amendola's want to throw Chris Hogan in there. Like um, they, they consistently found ways to get talent around him. So as long as I mean that's why teams go out and try to find guys that can really like you can lock in at your core if you have a guy of that talent level where it's like all you got to do is give him a chance all you got to do is put certain people around him and we can win the super bowl year in and year out so only thing only thing that would only thing i would ever have me going into a season from here on out especially if they win this one in question can they really do it is if like andy retires and kelsey retires and it's yeah. like you got a new coach in there. You got I don't know who the receiving room would be. Even if it's a good receiving room, it's like ah, right, you but you don't have your guy like Kelsey right. your guy. So I mean, who knows? Might be like a, a couple years away from that. You never really know. And I know Andy's getting up there in age. Hopefully he stays. I would love to see Andy like keep coaching for as long as you know, as long as they can stay together. Um, right. But even like Kelsey, Kelsey's thirty four, about to be thirty five. Like. He's flirted with retirement. Like, you never really know. So, I guess mm-hmm. we'll see what happens. We'll definitely see what happens. But it, it's going to be interesting discussions um, if they win the Super Bowl, for sure. Definitely. And uh, speaking of Kelsey, one of the last things I wanted to mention, and it just popped in my head, because we're talking about uh, how much Kyle Hamilton and his matchup in the AFC Championship mattered, and we saw how that played out. Like, Kelsey got the better of it, especially early on. Mm-hmm. Um, no Talano Ohofunga for the 49ers. Obviously, he got hurt. Um, during the season, so it'd be a great game for him to have, have been utilized. That'd have been huge. Um, so that's tough. It's unfortunate, but um, we said it early on in the playoffs. Like Kelsey was not looking like Kelsey, and then he got rolling in the Bills game, and then now you see he dominated early on in the AFC Championship game. Fred Warner, Dre Greenlaw, the Autumn, Trent McDuff, or I'm saying McDuffie. Um, that whole 49er secondary. Got a lot on her plate. A lot on her plate to deal with with 15 and 87. And you got a two like my another big thing too, especially with like older guys. He got two weeks off to, you know, rest, get his body right, prepare. Cause a lot right. I do feel like a lot of stuff with Kelsey was just like, but he's getting doubled every game. He's like playing every game. He's like the focal point of the offense. Like he's older. Like that just is a lot at one point of your career. But we've seen it like come playoff time, you know, when you can kind of relax a little bit you know you have a little bit of a break especially now with the two weeks off it's like he probably has time you know fully get his body right i believe even like week 18 sat out that week 18 so he can kind of get the rest and then he came out in the playoffs and you know looked like old travis kelsey so 
I, I got faith that he'll still, you know, step up to the plate and be the same old Travis Kelsey he's been these past couple of weeks. I think so too. Uh, before we get on out of here, must have Super Bowl game day food. Wings got to be up there. Wings is always an essential, bro. It got to be some wings. wings there. Do you like you like wings batter, like with you know, like like how fried chicken is, or do you like it fried straight up, no batter on it with the sauce? Wait, what do you mean batter? Like, what are you talking about? Like flour, you know, they do the flour stuff and they dip. Like, how you you got fried chicken at like Popeyes? You know how it's like fried chicken's got batter on it versus mm-hmm. like if you get wings from some places like a wing stop, oh, like wing. batter their chicken. Right, right, right. I say yeah. like with the sauce. I like it with the sauce. I mean, honestly, me personally, if it's wings, there, I'm eating it because like no, the way, I, the, way, the way I do, we always had a Super Bowl party every year. Probably not this year, but every year we had a Super Bowl party and we had a assortment of wings it was fried chicken wings it was over here it was buffalo with this it was that wings pizza this this listen man as long as it's good food there that's all i care about but wings is definitely right. a necessity for sure nah wings for sure need wings i think i, I also might need some nachos bro a good go a good hard. tray of nachos bro we had uh every year for the Super Bowl, we got um empanadas the- oh that's under i never heard that one bro it is if you can listen, anybody that's been to my house, they always say, yo, when, when they make an empanadas again, it's the I'm telling you it's money. Bro. Homemade? That, yes, bro. Oh, yes. Ah, yeah. and, then, and then add that with some buffalo dip. Yeah. Bro, it yeah. goes so far. Can't wait, man. Can't wait. It's going to yeah, be a good one. Definitely. Yeah. I, I really do think it's going to be a, a great game. Like, we got, it's been the last. It's like, what's the last couple of stretch of Super Bowls? Obviously, last year was phenomenal. That was a great Super Bowl. <laughs> Crazy one. The one before that was... Bengals, uh, Rams. Great that Super Bowl. That was a great Bowl. Super Bowl. Before, before that was that... Uh, had been another Chiefs one, It was right? a Chiefs... Chiefs. Uh-huh. No, 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 no. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it was Chiefs. It was a Chiefs and... That was a Chiefs Niners. No, nah, that was four... Is that really four years ago? Yeah, because this is last year. If it gave him, uh, I swear it was. I can't remember who. I don't know who else it would have been. I got to look it up. Because um, they lost. Yeah, they were supposed to go back to back. Right. Yeah, last year. So, yeah, Chiefs, Eagles, then Rams, Cincy. Oh, it was Kansas City lost Tampa Bay. Oh, yeah. you're right. You're right. Okay. Yeah, that was, a, that was a Brady's last Super Bowl. And then you got. Kansas City beating the Niners. Um, the Niners, yeah. And then the one before that is the Stinker Super Bowl, which the was Patriots. Patriots, Patriots, Rams. I don't care what I say. That Super Bowl sucked. That Super Bowl Dry, was bro. So I bad. know exactly where I was at when that Super Bowl happened. Like, we literally, all of us on campus, snuck into a classroom, turn on the projector, put the Super Bowl on the projector, and it's like 30 of us in there. We don't order food. Dry, dry football game. It was a terrible Super Bowl. Absolutely yeah. horrible. This one should be better, though. This one should definitely be better. It can't get much worse than that. <laughs> it can't no, get it definitely better. cannot. Cannot. But with that, that's going to do it for our Super Bowl 58 predictions. Like I said, you're probably going to be getting this on Friday. So, yeah, we're excited for the Super Bowl. Enjoy it. I mean, go get you some wings, maybe some empanadas. <laughs> and enjoy the game, bro, because this is so everybody's playing for. It feels like the NFL season done flew by, but it's here. This is it. So last game, as, man. Damn. Yep. No more football till August. Unless you're about to tap into the to the UFL. I'm, I mean, I'm out here. I'm out here in San Antonio. Dang. Sheesh. I'm about to say I'm gonna go to a game or two. <laughs> I'm straight. You know? Let's go to I right, if I'm going out there, we're gonna do a basketball game. I ain't gonna know. Nah, I'm straight. Oh, let's we go to both. Facts, facts. Double back, you know, the, the tickets should be cheap. I'm feeling it should be like I feel like you should be able to get great seats for like 40 bucks. If they could do that, then I mean, at the end of the day, it'll be football. So I'll be like, all right, cool, that's live. 40 bucks. I'll, I'll be here. Cool. I'll go watch football. I'll, I'll go to a high school football game. Don't have no idea who either team is, whatever. I'm locked in. I football know, going in, on. In Texas, I go to a high school football game down there. Mm-hmm. Get active. OD. But with that, that's going to do it for our preview episode. Appreciate the support as always. If you're not subscribed, subscribe to the channel. Leave a like, leave a comment, follow us at the socials there at the bottom at Off the Glass Pod on Instagram and at Off the Glass Podcast on TikTok. And we out. Peace. Yes, sir.